It's April and this is the Library Road Show. On the show today, it's all about the mystery with blockbuster author Lisa Wingate, Lady Sherlock, and more. Welcome to the April edition of the Library Roadshow. I'm Mary Stein, and this is a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. April means National Library Week, and we really can't separate libraries from authors, can we? So I'm pleased to announce that best-selling author Lisa Wingate will be our guest for Authors After Hours on Saturday, April 13th. A master storyteller, Lisa wants her books to not only be entertaining, but also life-affirming. Tending Roses, Sisters, and Before We Were Yours are just a few of her recent titles. Before We Were Yours even has a family mystery, so I can consider it part of our One Book, One Community series. Also on deck for April, our annual Authors Row at Jones Creek is set for April 6th, the same day as the main library's family-friendly celebration of Game of Thrones. Science fiction grandmaster and Hugo Award winner Samuel Delaney will share his thoughts on how science fiction works on Tuesday, April 23rd, and the second Mid-City Microcon takes place on Saturday, April 27. This year's headliner is Ashley A. Woods, whom you may know from her work on Tomb Raider and Niobe. The Microcon also features panels, workshops, costumes, and cosplay, and a host of talented writers and artists. Free access to books, audio, and library resources are just a few of the benefits available to you when you get a library card. Need free access to a computer? You get that. Want free access to premium digital resources like Mango Languages and Lynda.com? You get that. Need to book a meeting space? You get that. Heck, you can even check out a telescope or use a digital printer with your library card. If you live in East Baton Rouge Parish, pick up your free library card from your local branch library today. Premium access to everything the library system has to offer is waiting for you. For every kind of service or resource that the library offers in the real world, we also try to offer something to parallel it in the digital library. And some of our most popular resources answer the growing need for language learning at your own pace. Adam St. Pierre joins us now to explain in the digital download. Are you thinking about going to a foreign country? Studying abroad? Did you know that your library has digital resources to help you out with that? Besides physical travel guides, your library has Mango Languages, a fantastic tool to help you learn a language based on actual conversations you might have while interacting with the locals. Overdrive and the Libby app, downloadable ebooks, videos, and more to help you traverse foreign lands like you know what you're doing. And A to Z World Foods so you can research what flavors go into the dishes you enjoy across the sea, to the north of the US, or maybe to the south. Or maybe you can just look them up later if you want to recreate them at home with all of their recipes. And all of those things are free, free, free. Stop by your local library to get more info or head over to the digital library page at ebrpl.com. Thanks, Adam. We're so mobile these days. Whether traveling for work or leisure, the experience is certainly easier and even much richer when you have prepared with a little language and cultural context. Don't forget, we also offer magazines in a number of foreign languages in the digital library. And if you're working on beefing up your Spanish, you can even take a course in Gale Courses, use Mizzy with the kids, and even stream telenovelas in Pongalo. That'll get your ear up to speed fast. Let's shift gears and check in with Kayla Perkins, reporting in from the Beyond the Stacks. One Book, One Community is in full swing. We recently had the pleasure of hosting a Holmes-inspired author as part of the 2019 program. If you're a fan of Sherlock Holmes, you'll love this fun twist on the character. We're at the main library at Goodwood for the book talk with Sherry Thomas, author of Lady Sherlock, A Study in Scarlet Women. Let's check it out. I am Sherry Thomas. I am the author of the Lady Sherlock historical mystery novels. And we are here for the um, One Book, One Community event at the Goodwood Public Library talking about all things Sherlock and Lady Sherlock. 
The meeting room at the main library was packed for this One Book One community event. After all, how often do you get to meet with and ask questions of the author of one of your favorite books? This is uh, Sherry Thomas. We're going to have kind of a, I'm going to ask her a few questions just to kind of get her going, but then I want everyone else to kind of think of some questions to ask her yourself. Sherry Thomas is the author of the Lady Sherlock so series, which includes A Study in Scarlet series, Women, A Conspiracy in Belgravia, and The Hollow of Fear. Her unique spin on Sherlock Holmes breathes new life into the Holmes world, which made her the perfect complement to our celebration of The Hound of the Baskervilles. I first had the idea I want to write my own take on Sherlock Holmes when I read uh, Laurie um, R. King's um, Mary Russell and Sherlock Holmes books, in which she gave Sherlock Holmes a um, friend and mate who's a, a, a woman who's every bit as smart and indomitable as he was. Um, and so that made me go, wow, I really love um, that take on it. I wish I could do something like that. Um, but I didn't think I had it in me to do it then. Uh, fast forward until the um, BBC Sherlock came out and I was blown away mm -hmm. by their take, their update, how you know they thoroughly modernized uh, Sherlock Holmes, but yet it's still very much Sherlock Holmes. Um, so I was like, oh, they already updated to the 21st century and um, elementary on CBS already uh, made the uh, uh, Watson woman seemed like the only thing left to do was to make Sherlock woman and see what shakes out. And and I look around and I was shocked that nobody had done it yet, uh, at least not by the major publishers. So I was like, I guess I'm I'm the one for it. <laughs> I was not a writer, and I don't didn't say that to be modest. I I didn't have like journals full of stories. I never took a creative writing class. I was an avid reader. That was pretty much it. Uh, don't know what came over me. Uh, and God bless him. He, uh, my husband, never asked me that question himself. He, he also never asked me whether I lost my mind. He just kind of like backed off a little bit and said, "Sure, you know." <laughs> Ferris' lead character is Charlotte Holmes, an inquisitive woman who thinks little of the social expectations forced upon women in Victorian England. I asked Sherry what she hopes readers will take away from her books. I would hope that they take from her is. Charlotte thinks of the world very much in terms of power. Mm -hmm. She understands power, I think not instinctively, but, but as observed um, conclusions. Mm -hmm. She very much can look at a situation and understand where the power center is. She's not afraid of the idea of power, and she is not af she's not afraid of the pursuit of power. And she's not afraid to analyze everything in terms of how everything shakes out, because if you if you analyze things in terms of money, in terms of advantages, in terms of alliances, you're still in the end analyzing power. And she's very fluent in the conversation of power. And I think, you know, if I would like for readers to take anything away from it, especially female readers, um, I would love for them to become, you know, more conversant with power. She became very round, very, I mean, very, you know, like pleasantly plump, very, very feminine, who dresses in extravagant manner. Um, basically, uh, someone whom, if you see her um, look like that, and you see her like eating cake with great enthusiasm, she'll be the last person you would suspect of having a razor sharp mind. So who's your homes? More One Book One community details can be found at readonebook.org. To find out what's coming up next, pick up a copy of a monthly newsletter The Source or visit us online at www.evrpl.com. Sherry really nailed this revamp of Sherlock Holmes. As impressive as her books are and the accolades they have received, what makes them perhaps even more noteworthy is that English is Sherry's second language. <laughs> Amazing. Thanks, Kayla. I must say I thoroughly enjoyed Sherry Thomas's series and her presentation at the library. It's always so interesting to hear how the author develops her stories and her craft. I'm looking forward to book number four in the Lady Sherlock series. Stay right there. After the break, the library's new deputy director, Kristen Edson, joins me for a chat right here on the Library Roadshow. I'm Zoe Kravitz from Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Books are magical and reading can transform your life. Libraries make sure people of all backgrounds can experience the wonder of literature through literacy programs and access to media. Spread the magic by supporting your library.
Hi, I'm Ken Jeong from the new movie Wonder Park. In the film, a young girl finds a fantastical amusement park straight out of her childhood imagination. For a magical adventure of your own, look no further than your local library, which has books, games, and activities promoting creativity and discovery. Find something wonderful at your library. Do you wonder how your family landed here? Do you really know your family roots? Discover more about your family history at the East Baton Rouge Parish Library Genealogy Department. East Baton Rouge Parish Library. Become a member and discover more. You're watching the April edition of the Library Roadshow, everything you need to know about your local library system. Well, there's a lot going on behind the scenes at the library, and it takes a lot of people to make everything go smoothly so that you can get the program services and resources you need when you need them. Kristen Edson, our new deputy director, will help us keep it all on track. Okay, Kristen, tell us a little bit about yourself. Well, I'm originally from Michigan, just outside the infamous city of Flint. So oh, cold. <laughs> yes, actually, it was cold, so I did not miss that uh, the lovely winter they had. Although it was nice to go back and see my family, but I really enjoy the weather down here. Family's nice, but this is good weather. Yes, it is. Um, I went to Grand Valley State University, which is on the west side of Michigan. And then I went to Wayne State to get my degree in MLIS. And then I uh, spent a couple of years on the west side of Michigan again before spending 10 and a half years at Chicago Public Library. So the Windy City. The Windy City, yes. Not known for its wind by the actual miles per hour of the wind, but actually for the blustering political people that were there. Oh, I did not know that. I yes. thought it was for the freezing wind that was coming down the no, city streets. No, but that certainly helps continue that uh, lovely nomenclature of the Windy City. But again, it's better here. Yes. All right. What are you going to be focusing on here at the library in Baton Rouge? What, what are going to be some of your pri responsibilities? Well, I will be handling the maintenance of our lovely facilities, which is very important. Yeah. Um, I'm also taking over the computer and technical services division. So anything having to do with upgrading our technology and well, that's the stuff backbone that we have, of a modern library. Very, very much so. And then I'll also be working with you and Patricia and Spencer as far as the capital improvements projects go. So, so these are important foundational things that you're going to be helping us with. Yes, the good what, bones. What are some, in, in line, especially with that technology, what are some of the projects that you'd like to see get off the ground? I know we're working on something. <laughs> yes, I am in the works with hopefully getting us a new website. Oh, that would be great. Because that's our, that's our digital front door. That's our 24 hours, seven days a week, 365 days a year access to the library. So yes, it's very important that we keep it modern, up to date, easy to use, and make sure that we can get people to the resources that they need in the most efficient and user-friendly manner as possible. Right, because I, I know that these days, whether you have a storefront or a digital store, the experience needs to be equally welcoming and like you said, accessible. Everything needs to be findable. We need to make it easy for our patrons, our clients, and ourselves to help them. So there's a lot going on there. Yeah. So on the maintenance and facilities and capital improvement side of things, what's going on at Greenwell Springs? Well, we just reopened at the beginning of this month. We had a 10, 12, 14 day shutdown um, so that the con contractors could do some work that needed to be done when no one was, you know, around to get hurt or, or um, you know, interfere with their workings. So the biggest improvement I think that people will see are the new cow wells or the the skylighty yeah, things skylight. in the ceiling. That's a word I know. Yeah. Right. So, um, so they have a better look about them. They light in. They let in more light, and so that was a, a big improvement. And otherwise, everything's moving along really well. That's great. And Jones Creek is almost out the gate, isn't it? Yes, it is. So um, it went out for bid for con contractors. The bid closed on the 14th and it will be going out to the Metro Council this Wednesday, as a matter of fact, for them to approve for Lincoln builders who were the lowest bidders. Great. So we expect to kind of see some stuff moving around by the early summer. Yes. Yes. And River Center? River Center, we should be having a pre-construction kickoff meeting very soon, I believe uh, the second week of April. So things are moving along as they should be. Um, and that project's going to get back oh, on track. Yes. 
very much so going to be back on track. And by the end of October, construction should be done so that we can very shortly, hopefully after that, um, get it open and ready for the patrons to use. And that's right, because that's the whole point of bring our patrons modern facilities that give them all the features, amenities, whatever that they're used to seeing here at the main library and at all of our other branches. So how are you adapting to life in Red Stick? I think very well. Uh, I have purchased a home. I've been doing a lot of stuff around the house, getting ready. It's it's very interesting to be able to plant things in February. Oh, right. So um, that's been a bit strange, but very also very nice and exciting. So, um, yeah. Thank you, Kristen. And we're just so glad that you've joined our team. And I'm very happy to be here, too. Good. After the break, award-winning author Ronna Gray, plus book reviews from one of our younger library patrons. All that and more coming up next on the Library Roadshow. I'm Zoe Kravitz from Fantastic Beasts, The Crimes of Grindelwald. Books are magical and reading can transform your life. Libraries make sure people of all backgrounds can experience the wonder of literature through literacy programs and access to media. Spread the magic by supporting your library. It's Jack Black coming to you from the set of Jumanji. Everybody run! Why am I running so slow? I like Kent even with this place. Libraries and librarians transform lives every day through digital literacy, discovery, and lifelong learning. There's no puzzle too tough or challenge too great for your librarian. Find the clues to solve your next quest at the library. Welcome back to the April edition of the Library Roadshow. We don't have to look far for our next segment. Local author Ronna Gray has taken a break from writing about true crime and has given us some lighter fare, a mystery for kids, and co-written by kids. Ronna joins me now by phone. Okay, Ronna, what's this new book about? The Case of the Missing Poodle is a junior mystery set in New Orleans that involves the kidnapping of a little poodle from its home on St. Charles Avenue. And the story covers the efforts of two little girls to return her to her owner. Uh, the book takes you to all of your favorite spots in New Orleans as our junior detectives solve the case, leaving clues along the way for the reader to join in. What led you to write a fictional book in the mystery format? I suggested the format that it's written in because I grew up reading Nancy Drew and Hardy Boys mystery series, and I know that when you follow clues and stories reveal themselves throughout the book, it's a great way to get young readers really hooked on reading and interested. So I started off telling them uh, that we were going to write our own mystery story. Your co-authors are special to you, right? Explain why. My co-authors are special in many ways to me. They're eight-year-old identical twins, and they're also my great nieces. Their mom is my niece, Melissa Tom, who grew up here in Baton Rouge and is now a dentist in New Orleans. Given how young your co-authors were, how did you collaborate to get the book finished? We worked together on every aspect of this book to develop our story. Madeline and Catherine named all the characters. They decided where the story would take them. I would ask them, what are your favorite spots in New Orleans? They weighed in on options for how the characters might react to certain things that happened. And then we would sort of decide where we wanted the story to go, and I would go off and write. And then after I wrote a couple of chapters, we'd get back together and read together and see how it had come together. And sometimes I would email a chapter to their mom, and she would read it to them at night, 
and then they would call me the next day after school, and we would discuss it. How can folks get in touch with you, Rana? Viewers can go to my website, which is www.ronagray.com, to get in touch with me, to ask questions, to find out about the two books that I've written there, uh, or, or ronagray.com forward slash books. Thanks, Rana. I grew up on Nancy Drew and the Hardy Boys, so I am looking forward to the next installment of this mystery series for kids, especially since the action takes us through some familiar local landmarks. Stop by any of our 14 branches and you'll see patrons of all ages making good use of their library system. It's at this time we like to take a moment and meet with one of our younger library patrons and find out what they're reading at the library. Hi, my name is Alvin and I'm nine and my favorite book is Diary of the Kid. I like Diary of the Kid because my favorite character is the little boy. The little boy is super funny. Wednesday. Today he has five it to so the first thing I did when I got outside was sneak off to the basketball court to see if the cheese was still there and sure enough it was. My mom brings me to the library once a week. When I come to the library, I like to read books. Thanks, Alvin. Now bring your little ones to your local branch library once a week, just like Alvin. It's a great habit to get into. And on a related note, kids and even adults need to keep voting for their favorites for the great children's book all month. We don't add up all the ballots until the middle of May, so you have time to make your voice heard. Stay right there. You're watching the Library Roadshow. Well, Thomas, you've got pre-diabetes, but with more exercise and a change in diet, it can be reversed. I've tried exercising. It, it just makes me hungry for bacon. I love bacon, too. And who really likes to exercise? Not me. <laughs> me neither. Nobody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're good? What? Oh, you still have pre-diabetes. Big time. Hey, I'm Constance Wu. Did you know that Crazy Rich Asians was a book before it became a movie? You can still find books at the library, but libraries have so much more, including educational programs for families and opportunities for community engagement and professional development. So visit your library today. Hi, I'm Ken Jung from the new movie Wonder Park. In the film, a young girl finds a fantastical amusement park straight out of her childhood imagination. For a magical adventure of your own, look no further than your local library, which has books, games, and activities promoting creativity and discovery. Find something wonderful at your library. Special Collections wants to know, what's your BR web story? In 2016, the Baton Rouge Room began archiving the web in order to create a local history archive of websites by and about the citizens of Baton Rouge and East Baton Rouge Parish. So why are we doing this? You may have heard the saying, once it's on the web, it's there forever. But this statement is far from accurate. In fact, a website in its current state has a lifespan of only 92 days. There are many reasons why a website might change or disappear, but the most common causes include updating a website in order to reflect current information, neglect or takedown of a site, or the website may no longer function due to the site's age and the outdated technology used to create the site. Our archivists have been working diligently to collect and preserve local websites, but we believe an archive should be curated by the community it intends to reflect. Check out the Baton Rouge Room Info Guide and submit your website nomination anonymously with our website nomination form. If you have any questions or suggestions, please call 225-231-3752 or visit the Special Collections Department on the second floor of the main library at Goodwood, where Baton Rouge history comes alive. You're watching the April edition of the Library Roadshow, a production of your East Baton Rouge Parish Library System. We're real excited about collecting all these reports and stories from the field. And did you know that there was so much interesting information about the history of Baton Rouge all under one roof? 
Come on down and check out the great old photographs, looks up some of the branches on your family tree, or just enjoy learning about the history of our great capital city. It's all available at the main library on Goodwood, and it's free with your East Baton Rouge Parish Library card. Your East Baton Rouge Parish Library system has 14 branch locations. These local branches offer programming and education that caters to the communities that house them. This month, we stopped by the Fairwood branch to learn about a monthly book club that they host. This is the Fairwood branch library on Old Hammond Highway. This is the Book and Brew book club. We meet once a month. And this week, excuse me, this month, we took the OBOC, the One Book, One Community, the Hound of the Baskervilles. And we are discussing it. And as you can kind of hear in the background, these ladies all have their opinions. Why does Laura Lyons refuse to tell anyone why she missed her late night appointment with Sir Charles? These uh, ladies are from other places, from Las Vegas, from Chicago, from Mississippi, and they have moved here, and the way they are making new friends, since they knew no one, they came to the library. And what more, they love to read, so when the book club, when they heard about it, they right away joined in and they have been good friends. They do things now outside of the library. They have made plans to uh, go to Vegas, <laughs> where one of them lives, lived. And they go, of course, to the main library and other activities that are in the uh, library system. They have really joined up and, you know, they are just good friends. They've exchanged their little phone numbers and they just uh, are making real, it's just enjoyable to see that the books were the springboard, this little book club. While this meeting focused on the Hound of the Baskervilles, Madeline likes to change things up to keep things fresh month to month. Each month there is something different. We change it from nonfiction to fiction to biographies. Um, I, I started doing that just because we uh, enjoy having a variety. We didn't want just a murder mystery because that only draws in a certain number of people who only like that kind of book. So we do that, but summer we're going to have a lot of beach stories and a little more fun for the summer. If you want to join us for our next book club, you just call the Fairwood Library. You just come on by and of course you just drop in. There's no registration. You just can come on through. Programs like this provide opportunities for neighbors to come together close to home. Find out what's going on at your local branch library by visiting the calendar of events at ebrpl.com. Thanks, Kayla. We're certainly having fun with the One Book, One Community theme and plenty more programs to go during April to celebrate Sherlock Holmes and the Hound of the Baskervilles. Major programs still to come include Things That Go Bump in the Night on April 14th, then Watson and Holmes, A Study in Black is a special feature of the Mid-City Microcon on April 27th. And all paws on deck really lets the dogs out on April 28th. Find out more in the source or check out the complete schedule at readonebook.org. And now for today's contest, visit the library's Facebook page at facebook.com slash ebrpl. In honor of Mother's Day, share the title of the book you wish you could write for your mother to read. That's facebook.com slash ebrpl. And while you're there, enjoy. We're not your grandfather's library anymore. What's coming up on the Library Roadshow in May? How about some music and gardening at the library? And coming up next month, I'll share another digital resource with you. Tune in next month and I'll showcase some of the artists at the Mid-City Microcon. Thanks so much for joining us on the Library Roadshow. And remember, your East Baton Rouge Parish Library is open seven days a week at each and every one of 14 branches, plus 24-7 on the web. Check us out at ebrpl.com. And that's how we roll.